Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today, for the glorious Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are going to be exploring one of the most deadly fruits within the entire series, wielded by a man who spends most of his time on the toilet, the Doku Doku no Mi. The Doku Doku no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to generate and manipulate various types of poison. And first and foremost, I want to dispel any confusement surrounding the classification of this fruit, as certain segments of the fan base do often mistake this for a Logia fruit. However, the user of the Doku Doku no Mi cannot become poison. It just might get confusing because the user in the series just so happens to love covering himself in death goo, thus giving the impression that he becomes poison at times. Speaking of, this fruit was consumed by the one-time Warden of Impel Down Magellan, and given that, it should be fairly reasonable to assume that it made its first appearance during the Impel Down arc. In terms of names and stuff, we have another fairly straightforward fruit here, as Doku is the Japanese word for poison. Although there is a little bit of a fun pun within the name of the devil fruit being Doku Doku, because that happens to be the Japanese onomatopoeia, meaning something along the lines of in a steady stream. Now both Viz and Funimation are in agreement regarding the English translation of this fruit. However, it's not poison poison as you may suspect, and it is in fact the venom venom fruit. The difference between poison and venom being that venom is a poison a substance crafted within animals and injected into a target, whereas poison is more of a substance that is secreted and ingested. And it might seem like an odd choice at first, but many techniques used by Magellan actually have venom in their name, so I can see why they went down that venom road. Although actually a lot of his techniques have poison in the name as well, but let's, let's not think about that. But make no mistake, poison is what this fruit is really all about. And just another brief thing on etymology and semantics, it's worth noting that the Funimation dub differs considerably from the Viz manga translation, as they continue the venom naming scheme even when poison would be the more correct translation, both in terms of the literal word doku and in the pragmatic interpretation of the attack. All right, so when I said in the beginning that this was one of the most deadly fruits to have ever existed, I absolutely mean it. Everything about this fruit is designed to irritate, maim, or kill whoever just so happens to be around or targeted by it. And that really is up to the discretion of the user as they have complete control over what type of poison they emit as well as its potency. Now, as for the extent of poison typings, the most basic distinction that we're able to make is that the user can generate poison in the form of either liquid or gas, with both of them holding their respective advantages and disadvantages. However, it isn't necessarily that simple because within those two categories, not only can the user, as mentioned before, control the potency of the poison, but they also seem to have more advanced chemical control. And this was demonstrated in the series when Magellan was able to craft a liquid imbued with a heavily corrosive agent. Now I point this out because it's a very common trope in media that the more potent the poison is, the more automatically corrosive or corrosive at all it is. And this simply is not the case. But as a result of this extreme control, the user of the Doku Doku no Mi can mimic a wide array of substances such as tear gas. With this in mind, I think it's fair to speculate that the user of this fruit would be able to mimic most known poisons within the world, provided they had an understanding of their chemical composition in order to generate them. And this also leaves a lot of potential to augment the fruit's output, as if the user were incapable of generating a substance needed to craft a particular type of poison, they would more than likely just be able to add that foreign agent to their body and wield temporary poisonous glory. However, this sort of usage would be best suited to a chemist rather than than, you know, a jailer. So speaking of, let's examine how Mr. Magellan makes use of this fine, fine fruit. And for the most part, it is actually pretty incredible. Magellan is a man of very blunt needs and actions, and his use of the Doku Doku no Mi very much reflects that. For a start, Magellan has a tendency of coating himself in a layer of liquid poison, a sort of armor per se, which definitely doesn't protect him from being hit. However, it will make the person attempting to strike him think twice, because they'll immediately be exposed to what could potentially be deadly poison. Of course, Magellan is also a bit more direct than this, and he won't simply wait for someone to hit him, instead preferring to conjure a Hydra out of poison, which has the same effect, only it is entirely offensive, putting any potential opponents in a very unenviable situation of neither being able to strike the creature nor be struck by the creature. And another wonderful innovation with the fruit that I quite enjoy is the Venom Road technique, in which Magellan engulfs himself within said Hydra and uses it to move at high speed, because it should be said that Magellan can conjure an absolutely ridiculous amount of poison, so he can more or less use it like the tube transport system in Futurama. Now, as for a, uh, a more questionable use of the fruit, this oddly hasn't been stated before now, but consuming the Doku Doku no Mi will make its user immune to the intended effects of external poisons, you know, like death and such. However, it does not, I repeat, it does not negate the effects of foreign poisons entirely. And to demonstrate this, we need only to focus on Magellan's unique appetite. Now, Mr. X Warden eats almost exclusively poisoned food. And there is a big, big misconception out there that this food is poisoned through Magellan's own devil 
Devil Fruit powers. It is not. Instead, Magellan sources outside poisons for his food, which results in him spending up to 10 hours a day in the bathroom due to the intense diarrhea that consumption of external poisons causes him. Now, equally as terrifying as spending 10 hours a day on the toilet is the idea of awakening this Devil Fruit. Because even if the Doka Doka no Mi subscribes to the standard Paramecia Awakening, meaning that its user would now be able to turn the environment around them into poison, then it could become apocalyptically devastating. But while we're here, there is also another misconception that Magellan is already an awakened Paramecia user. And it comes from the idea that Magellan's ultimate attack being the Venom Demon was shown influencing the environment, like the stone around Impel Down and Galdino's Wax, stuff like that. This is not an awakening. It's simply what happens when a hypertoxin comes into contact with, well, any substance. It goes on to make it toxic to some degree. An awakening would be more like Magellan waves his hands and transforms a portion of Impel Down into poison, which both Dolphamingo and Charlotte Katakuri were shown to be capable of with their respective awakenings. And you know that isn't to say that Magellan isn't an awakened user, he just hasn't shown the standard signs of a Paramecia awakening, and thus we cannot classify him as such. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a poison human. While the Doka Doka Do Mi does present some fairly fearsome power, its utility is uh, it's questionable. There is no doubt that the natural tendency of this fruit leans towards destruction, and as such, it may be difficult to apply to a peaceful existence, unless of course that existence is achieved through maintaining order with a particularly heavy hand. Although one thing you may be able to do is contribute to science by replicating various poisons in order to develop an antidote for them or to study them in some form. Or, and this is a radical idea, but perhaps true mastery of the awakening of this fruit would allow its user to non-poisonous substances that can actually benefit those around them. But admittedly, I think that this is a bit of a stretch. But in the end, I can't help but come back to the sheer power contained within the Doku Doku no Mi. I mean, if it simply generated one type of poison, then that would be, well, one thing. But the user's ability to control the poison at minute levels is impossible to ignore. This fruit holds incredible potential. However, that potential exists primarily within one sector, which is combat and containment. And you know, if that's your jam, then this is 100% recommended because there are very, very few other fruits out there that will serve your purposes better. However, for those of you who are looking for something that will greatly assist day-to-day -day life, well, there are many, many better options. And with that, we are going to commit the Doku Doku no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, we'll be taking a side step from chronology. Well, not really, because it was around this time that chapter zero came out, I guess. But we are going to be setting our sights onto the incredibly floaty powers held by Golden Lion Shiki with the Fua Fua no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all the amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Doku Doku no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. I understand you have a dog. If he slash she had a devil fruit ability, what would it be? And yes, you understand correctly. I have a border collie named Puck, and if he were to possess some sort of devil fruit, then I suspect it would be something related to licking, like the lick lick fruit, which in my mind would enhance the user's tongue to the point where it has some sort of special powers depending on the desire of the user. Basically, this is because Puck is a voracious licker, which is something that all puppies do. And in fact, my wife told me that when we first got him, that this was all just a phase and that he will grow out of it. But you know, five years later, if either of us are foolish enough to put our face close to his, then it is an instantaneous tongue bath. Who would win in an all-out battle, Brooke or Frankie? Although Frankie is not allowed to use his giant robot. Hmm, intriguing. I think this very much depends on what the conditions of victory are. I mean, from Frankie's perspective, he just needs to punch things and make sure they don't get up to achieve victory. However, Brooke's priorities are somewhat, uh, how shall we say, unrelated to combat. In fact, thinking about it, I feel like Brooke's only goal in life is to see panties. I mean, other than the boon, but let's be honest, panties trump whale. So Brooke actually becomes the automatic winner of this fight because Frankie's undergarments are on display at all times. How long did it take you to grow your channel? Well, it's still growing, so I can't give you quite a solid answer on that, but I can pinpoint when it started to take off. And essentially, it took about an entire year of making content solidly. Mainly chapter reviews and One Piece 101s to gain any sort of traction. 
So by the end of the first year that I'd been making stuff consistently, I had 500 subscribers, which I thought was incredible at the time. And I would like to thank everyone who did subscribe in the early days of uh, questionable content. But after that, things just kind of exploded. I'm not really sure how. A month later, that count doubled to 1,000. And by the time the next year came around, we were sitting at over 30,000. And now here we are having toppled 100,000. It's been an incredibly surreal journey. Why don't you make 10 mins video as? or do sponsors. All right, so starting with sponsors, to put it frankly, I've never been offered a legitimate sponsorship. I have, however, been approached by a lot of dodgy companies who propose to quote unquote, sponsor the channel through affiliate marketing, which I highly recommend nobody out there ever partakes in because it's just a scam for the large majority of the time. As for 10 minute video as, I absolutely do make those, although they are a lot rarer on this channel because it focuses on delivering clear, concise, and easily digestible content. As a result, I can't really add a lot of padding to the videos, nor can I um, and err a lot because I, I just hate that. However, something I could theoretically do is artificially extend a video by adding a question and answer segment at the end in order to reach that sweet, sweet 10 minute mark, but still provide you all with some sort of quality content. But of course that's just hypothetical. I mean, who, who would ever do such a thing?